Hey, what's up? It's Marcus and uh, welcome back. Today we're going over a battle song tier list because apparently I just talk about battle songs now and that seems to steadily, you know, gain subscribers and be what people want me to talk about. So uh, what we're going to do is go over tier list. I actually have it written out, uh, but I'm not going to show it there because then people can just pause the video and read, although you'd be missing out on my thoughts uh, as a uh, slightly below average flipper. So uh, it's a standard tier list, you know, S, A, B, C, D, and F, uh, with a couple little like special mentions essentially, just some side notes, some uh, knives that I didn't want to put in a tier list, but still feel like talking about. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rather than doing a random assortment or just you know starting from the top down, we're starting with the F tier and working our way up to the S tier. Uh, so we'll see what happens, how much editing goes into this. It might just be a thing where I just talk at the camera and we see what happens. Uh, I might do some cuts in here and you know, it all just kind of depends on, on how I ramble, if anything happens that, that interrupts the take, etc. So without further ado, let's jump into it with the F tier. Unsurprisingly, at the bottom of the F tier is the OSP Matrix 2. It is, like I said in my uh, review, it's the least, it's my least favorite balance on that I've ever owned. It was bad. Uh, I don't like when battle songs come unsharpened. If I want an unsharpened knife, I will buy a trainer. Um, I understand that, you know, sometimes because of legality, blah, blah, blah. But if you're selling a knife, sell it sharpened. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's just my opinion. You know, if, it's, if I want a trainer, I'll buy a trainer. Uh, so it came unsharpened. It was uh, really awkward and heavy, but also slow and light, it, it was light and heavy at the same time. It just, it felt chonky and thick, but also felt like it was made out of plastic. And it just had the worst general texture and, and feel of any knife. And it looks cartoony and weirdly organic in a bad way. It just, it was bad and I didn't like it. Uh, the other F tier knife is the Rightworks Ga, the uh, Washer's Edition. Um, not a huge fan of washers only knives, and I thought the Ga is just too expensive. Even the the standard retail version, right? Not the insane secondary prices. The standard retail Ga on washers is way too expensive. I understand that, like, oh, it's good steel and oh, it's titanium. It has weird play. It doesn't feel good for being a pinsless knife. It just kind of had a weird flow to it, and it is too small feeling essentially and it was massively overhyped it was a bad knife i i don't like it it was bad when people are like gauze are my grail i don't i don't understand it uh before people go oh try one with bushings i did which brings us to knife number uh one and only on the d tier list this is a knife that is not good but not it's not awful but i i didn't like it it wasn't for me that was a uh, DLC coated bushings got. I had a video on my channel for a bit. Um, I took it down because A, I accidentally put my address in it and B, it just, I don't know. I don't really wanna promote Ryworks work. Um, not a huge fan of Ryworks as a creator. Uh, I might make a separate video on that. We will see if I if I do a little a Ryworks rant essentially. Um, I guess if there's interest in that, go ahead and leave a comment, whatever. I don't personally like Rightworks. Uh, his knives, him as a maker, etc., left a really bad taste in my mouth. And I'm, I'm, uh, I don't just want to shit on anybody, but I'm also not going to not talk about it if people want to hear about why I don't like Rightworks. Uh, but Bushing's got tolerances are better. It was nice looking. I just yeah, they flip weird. I don't enjoy how they flip. I didn't enjoy the texture of the DLC finish. And again massively overhyped i paid too much for it and i let it go for less than what it was worth um didn't didn't like it not a good knife that's the only knife i have in c tier uh which or uh, d tier rather which brings us into the c tier this has three knives in it uh one of them two of them make me sad that they're c tier but when i was going through every knife that i've ever touched looked at owned uh these didn't really fit in the higher tiers, but they weren't bad enough to be in the lower tiers. So rounding at the bottom of the C tier, we have the Gemini AA the uh, by DDR. It is, 
yeah, DDR. Uh, sorry, totally lost my train of thought there. I'm not gonna cut that, whatever, we're gonna keep going. The Gemini AA that I had was Sarah coated, which was really nice. And despite being told that it was a, a washers only knife, I was able to crank the pivots down all the way without locking the knife up. So I don't, I don't know. I've, I've never experienced that in a washers only knife, but I could do that in the Gemini AA. So either I was misinformed there or it actually had bushings or this was modded to have bushings along with the Sarah coating. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, it was neat. It, it felt like a classic old school, like eighties action movie battle song. So it was fine. It was, uh, it was not bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. There was nothing special about it. I, I don't really love DLC coatings on, on knives. I've decided so that's kind of part of the issue. I think on the handles, it just, it's grippier, but not in a good way. It's kind of like a, I don't know. I don't feel like a layer of like grit on your fingers and you touch stuff. It's for me, it's off putting. I. I don't know if that's just a sensory issue I have or what, but I, I did not like it. It was sharp. It wasn't crazy sharp. It wasn't dull. It was fine. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I just don't have anything good to say about it. It was a knife. I don't understand why they're sought after. I don't understand why the original Cold Steel Archangel sought after. It's okay. You know, if you like it, good for you. If you don't, great. I, I wasn't a fan. And that's that's really all I can say. Uh, next on the C tier is the Black Ballast song, The Purge. I, I was sad to put this one here. Uh, I'd seen them before. They look amazing. The harpoon style blade is incredible. I, I actually like D2 steel as a knife blade. It's it's strong. It's really strong. And if you just oil your blade, the corrosion resistance issue that D2 steels have is not an issue anymore. Um, I didn't like the handles. Stone texture finish is gave me the heebie-jeebies. I, I have some weird sensory things that, that kind of are off-putting in terms of knives and that was one of them. Uh, there were some quality control issues as well. Just some kind of like, granted mine was a prototype, but I saw people that bought non-prototype models that have similar issues with just scuffing on the blade. Um, some wonkiness in the tune. Like one handle had just like, like one handle would lock up if I tighten it down despite, you know, having bushings, uh, which, which means the bushings were different sizes. Uh, the other handle was fine. So it, it's really neat looking. I know some people like it. I thought it was a little handle heavy and I didn't want to take it apart and put in different spacers and I didn't have different spacers to put in it. So what are you going to do? Um, that said, it was insanely sharp, which I appreciate. I like a knife with a little bit of, like they're sharp and then there's, oh my God, I looked at it wrong and it's cutting me sharp. And I do like them when they're that sharp. It's it adds a little extra danger to it. I think it's, it's exciting. So I liked it. Aesthetically, it's great. I just, Texture-wise and weight-wise and general quality control, I think it was lacking. So it's C tier, and then the hardest one for me to put in C tier was a, uh, a the JK Design Light Tech. Uh, granted, I had the kind of I don't know the blade name, kind of a cleavery looking head, not the harpoon, which I really liked the look of, um, and everything else was stock. It is. It was nice. It's cool. Great blade. Didn't like the shape. The actual edge was great, rather. So it was, it was a good knife. It was a great knife, maybe, uh, in terms of actually cutting ability. But with the blade shape, it was kind of off-putting to look at and, and tell what was happening while flipping. And, and without actually marking the bite handle, it's a little, I don't know, the, the shape of it made it hard to tell immediately which one was the bite and which one was the safe hand just by looking. Whereas opposed to this PDN where I can go bite, safe, easy peasy, because the, the blade shape is very easy to tell. Um, same with something like a, the Disciple, you know, it, even without opening it, it's really obvious where the bite handle and where the safe handle is. Same with the Tsunami. Again, easy to tell where it is, which it's hard to tell when you're flipping, which is why people get markers. I understand that. But just from a, the sake of, of picking up the knife and looking at it, I, I like to, to be able to see it without a marker. Um, and in my opinion, the light tech with that blade shape was hard to do. It also had some weird weight issues, but aesthetically I liked it. Uh, I would have liked it more with the harpoon blade, but it's just kind of, mm, it's high C tier, low B tier, which is kind of why it's in a transitionary area. It could reasonably go in B tier, but I think I'm gonna stick with C tier for the purpose of this uh, this video here. 
which brings us to B tier though. Uh, bottom of the B tier, the Matt Cook Dragonfly. I get why they're nice. The mirror polishing on the blade was incredible. It had good quality control, great tolerances. It kind of just felt, it was too slick. The handles were insanely slick. Um, and the general feel of flipping, it just kind of had some heft to the handles that wasn't weight. It was just the width and the chonkiness of them. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, I think it's a little overrated or isn't worth the price at least, but it was not a bad knife. Um, mid, mid B tier is the, uh, and this might be a controversial take, it's the Ryworks Konohishi Kogarasu. I've heard a lot of people say great things about Konos. I've heard, I mean, people go fucking crazy for them. They are, they are insanely expensive and I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Um, I think they're overrated. I think that there's a level of appeal that comes from the fact that they are a Japanese made knife. I think, um, Rye works in his kind of games he plays with how he auctions things off and, and puts things up for drops is kind of drives some supply. You know, it's, it's obviously he only made 90 of them or something like that. So they're, they're limited, which I understand is a collector's piece, but I just, I don't think they're that great. Um, it's neat that they use, I can't read, SPG2, SPG2 maybe? A, a unique Japanese blade still that's not really produced anymore. So, so that's cool, but in general, it, it was really disappointing. I, I can't reasonably put it lower than B tier because it, it was still objectively a good knife. Um, it was good length, good handle size. It had a good feel to it, but in terms of how overrated it is, it's, it's insane that they go for three times what they originally MSRP'd for. That's ridiculous to me. It's not, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. There are better flippers that are, in my opinion, better looking and less expensive that are on the market right now. And, and the Kono is just, it is overrated. If you have a chance to get one at like a, a crazy low price or if you win Ryworks' giveaway, then, then that's neat, like good for you. But it's, it's a B tier. It's not worth what everyone says it is. Uh, I just, it wasn't worth it. It is not a, it's not a great knife. It's good. It's cool. It's got some unique things to it, but between the edges on the handles being a little rough, not, not jagged rough, but it's got sharp edges. And the general fact that it was like, it's the greatest thing in the world. And it's just, it's not, it's fine. Uh, and again, I think Rye Works is meh. So there's that. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. Finally, in the B tier, we have the Carbon Fiber Basilisk R uh, by Home Design, and I, I really liked it. Um, the issue I had with mine, other than the fact that I think, again, the handles just had a weird whiteness to them. I like the texture of the carbon fiber finish. I like the weight of the knife. Uh, it was so smooth. It had great bushings. It was really sharply tuned. It was fantastic. It had a great edge, and it had a needle sharp tip. It was, it's aesthetically great. I really, I liked it. The problem is, the tip is impractical. As soon as you drop it wrong, the tip is gone. And I, I like I like my I like my knives to look nice, but I also don't want to only flip them over a bed, or a mattress, or a couch, or a carpet, or whatever, right? And I mean, realistically, because of where I am and in my state's carry laws, I can't just go flip it out, you know, in the backyard, in the front yard. I can flip it in the backyard. I can't go flip it in the front yard. I guess it, it's still my property. I, I could flip it in the front yard can't go flip it while I'm walking down the street, right? So it doesn't really matter. It's not like I was gonna ever flip it over concrete anyways. But the fact that even dropping it in carpet tip first wrong would, would wreck it is, uh, it's a little disappointing. And uh, I, that, that makes it harder for me to put it higher because then I'm concerned about dropping it when it's, it's not that expensive of a knife. Um, that said, I, I like the basilisk, I like the shape. I think home design knives are really nice. Um, I would not mind picking up some of his higher end knives at some point, but the carbon fiber basilisk R is is B tier for me, but it's the top of the B tier. It's it's really nice. Um, before we get into the A tier and S tier knives, I just want to give a special mention to uh, three different knives that I'm not putting in the tiers because I don't think they should be in the tiers. Um, first off, the Squiddy B because it is it is not a knife. Uh, mine is colored with sharpies. But this is not a knife. It's a trainer, so I'm not putting it in the tier list. But it's I have not touched it in a while, and it uh, it's lighter than I remember, so I actually just yeeted it there. So the Squiddy B is really nice um, as a trainer. It's great. It's not expensive. 
It is well made, it's fun to use, you can take it anywhere. I like it, but I'm not going to put it in a tier list. Um, the other two knives are Benchmade knives, the uh, 51 and 85. And a lot of people like 51s, mine was just stock, my 85 was also stock, and I understand that a lot of people like to mod their 51s, and I know Will Hirsch has a review of his 51 where he basically goes, it's the worst, unless you mod it, and then it's the best. Um, so as a flipper, the Benchmade 51 Morpho, I think if your goal is balance on flipping, it is not good. It's got some, it's it's too light, it's got washers only, it's got a pocket clip and a latch, you've got to take it apart to get those things out. But as a knife, I like it. It is light, it is well designed, the spring latch is really cool, um, it's got a great blade. So as a actual usable knife, the Benchmade 51 is fantastic. As a balisong for flipping, it's not. But as a balisong to use as a tool on a daily basis, it is fantastic. Um, and the 85, essentially, if you can get one secondhand or not at MSRP, same boat. The Benchmade 85 is, it's a tool. It is not for flipping. It runs on bearings. It's heavy. It's got, I mean, it's, it's heavy. Uh, it's got, it's got a latch, which is, it's actually very cool for a latch. It's magnetic and, and it's neat. Go look up other videos for that. It's, it's fantastic though. Um, as a tool, the blade is insanely sharp. It's durable. It's stone washed. So it looks, um, like it'll hold up damage well. I really liked mine, but it was not good for flipping. It is heavy and weirdly fast with a lot of weight behind it. So it's it's just not that great for flipping, but as an actual knife to be used as a knife, it was fantastic. Um, so I'm not gonna put Benchmade Balance songs. Those are the only two Benchmade Balance songs I've used. They weren't modded. So I'm not gonna put them in the tier list because to me, they're not a flipping ballast song. They are ballast songs, but they are, they are, you can tell they're designed as tools. So I'm going to put those in their own little category of special mentions. Great ballast songs if you want a ballast song that you're using as a knife. If you want one to use as a flipper, no, uh, just don't. There's much better, less expensive options. Now for the A tier, this is, this is a long video and I'm, I'm really fucking rambling here. EX10. Jeff Dumas EX10, um, I think it's solid aesthetically, not necessarily my cup of tea. It's a little, it's a little plain, um, but it's also, it's neat. It was fine. Uh, great edge, really nicely built, springy, light, fun to use, overpriced on the secondhand market, which, which is an issue with a lot of these knives. <laughs> Secondhand pricing is, is the biggest issue that, that kind of lowers them in a tier for me or can affect their tier ranking where they're not so good that you have to get them at the price that they're available. Um, and EX10 is great. I really liked mine. But nothing made it stand out as an S tier knife, and it, especially not at secondhand market prices. Um, next up in the A tier, we've got the Cracker Rack and V2 from Squid Industries, which is yes, good. I, I like my Kraken. It, it was uh, fantastic. Black, black on black, the inked version. It was it was nice. Uh, it's got a really good length. It had perfect handle size. It's light. It's inexpensive enough that you can beat it, and not have to think about like, oh my gosh, I'm destroying a, you know, a piece of art essentially. It's it's a fun knife. It's it's a must have. It is very nearly S tier. Um, but I put it in A because I, I didn't want my S tier to be overcrowded because I there's quite a few knives, all things considered, that I think are S tier knives. Um, I, I don't have anything bad to say about the Cracker Rackin. It is inexpensive. It is fun. It's agile. It's well made. It, it's a good knife. I, I enjoy it. Uh, next in the A tier, and finally in the A tier, is the JK Design Orca, which is is nice. It is so good. Um I, I, it was my first very good high tier, high quality ballad song. I, I would have put an S tier for the longest time, but and, and that's Pinsless Channel Titanium. I think everyone here knows what an Orca is, so I, I didn't. I don't think I need to explain that, but that's that's what it is. Um, the blade is great, and the the edge is insane. JK makes great knives. I, I really like all of his products, um, even even the ones that I put in C tier like the light tech, I still really like. Um, the Orca, I think, is A tier, though. Uh, for me, personally, 
the handles, the handle gap and the actual handle thickness was just a little unwieldy by comparison to some of the knives that I really, really have enjoyed, um, which is the only reason it's not an S tier for me anymore. Uh, it is fantastic. If you can get one at not insane secondhand markup, go for it. Uh, secondhand prices, as usual for a lot of these, way too high. But as it is though, uh, I really like the Orca. Again, handles are a little thick for my personal preference, um, but it's a great knife. I really liked it, and I, I might try and pick another one up in the future, or hopefully a V2 Monarch, because I really like those. That is like, I, I like the V2 Monarch. Aesthetically, oh, so cool, uh, but I'm not going to pay the current secondhand price. Uh, Blade Show West was just a couple days ago as of recording this, and I think uh, the, from what I saw, prices were marked up four to five to six hundred dollars in some cases, which is ridiculous. Uh, and I'm not gonna pay secondhand prices for a monarch. I will, I will wait until some other point in time. Uh, moving in to the S tier. S tier has a lot of, um, it's got a lot of knives in it. There's one knife that, as I'm looking at it right now, I'm not gonna put an S tier. It's gonna be its own. It's gonna be its own separate tier um for very obvious reasons but it's it's still s tier essentially uh so s tier apart from this one knife has four knives in it and uh i think s tier is the best the best of the best excuse me i'm, I'm not gonna pause and edit that I, i'm 22 minutes in we're not we're rolling uh this could have been a podcast if i made podcasts that's that Whatever, whatever. We're still working on the kinks of this channel, and by we, I mean me. And by working on the kinks, I mean I'm gonna just kind of make these as I as I see fit. So, enough delay. Uh, S tier ish knife, but not really S tier because it's its own thing, and I don't think I should put it in a tier because it's my high custom. Uh, this one, I, initially in my list, I had this as an S tier knife. And the reason I'm not putting it in the S tier is because I don't think it needs to be on a tier at all. It is, um, it's a one-of-a-kind custom knife. It does not need to be put in a tier. Go. Sorry, I'm talking to my dog. He needs to be not in this room right now. Um, because he is, we've got wood floors and his little paws click clack and pitter patter. And it is, uh, it's, it's distracting. So, the Hybel Custom is, in my opinion, an S-tier knife, but also I'm not going to tier it because of the fact that this one is one of a kind, um, as are most custom knives. Uh, I just did my review over it, and uh, it is my, it's not tracking well, so if you wanna go watch the review, go ahead and watch it. Um, I probably need a better thumbnail, but YouTube's thumbnail thing isn't letting me change the thumbnail for some reason. I've never had that issue before. Uh, so. In that video though, uh, the blade is, is amazing. I love the Damacore, the, it's insanely sharp. Uh, I've cut myself just barely making tiny little errors. Um, it is an absolute razor. I, I can literally shave with it. It is a little hefty, apparently black Damascus, which is a Damascus used in this, um, has higher zirconium content, which makes it heavier. So this is a 5.44 ounce knife, which is, is heavy but it feels sturdy. I, I said so many great things in my review about it. I, I don't really need to do a whole new review. Um, I adore this knife, it is fantastic. It is easily in my top three all-time favorites, but because of the fact that it's a custom, all I can say is if you want a custom knife, go to Adam Heibel. His knives are fantastic, uh, but I'm not gonna put it in the tier list because this is not a reasonable knife for anyone to ever pick up, ever. Uh, it's not a production knife. It is very much unique to me. I. I put all the things together on the site. I, I chose the options. So it's, it's not, I'm not going to tier it, but it is also S tier. That's very contradictory, but I, for the purposes of video, just put that somewhere else in your brain. Um, okay. Into the real S tier. These are all knives that can be purchased. These are all knives that are their own thing. All knives are their own thing. These are all knives that can be purchased. They all are available. None of these are custom or crazy. Well, one of these is crazy, but none of these are custom. Um, 
So we're going to start at the bottom of the S tier, and that is the Benson Blades Planarian. Uh, it has the most amazing ringing sound. I've got a review. Check it out. Uh, I, I'm pointing, but I will not have anything here. Just go click on my channel and, and find it. Uh, there will be no link in this, this area. Nothing. Um, it's got a great ring. It's sharp. It's got a great design. It's incredibly unique. Um, talked a little bit with Benson. He seems like a good dude. His knife, again, some of the most unique looking, definitely the most unique sounding, well balanced, flips great, very cool, easy S tier. Uh, next up in the S tier, we have the uh, Jimpy Sentinel, and I, I, I had an NRB finish one that was his grade B, uh, and I, I don't know why it was grade B. It had one of the best tunes of any knife I've ever used. Channel Titanium, great sound, good balance, sharp. Um, the only thing that I didn't like is that it has a pretty cheap blade steel for the price that it is, which I, I don't, it feels like it's cutting corners at that point. If, if something like is, if something's going to cost a couple hundred dollars, it should have a blade that is worth a couple hundred dollars. Um, I know there's more to the value of a balance song than just the blade. Uh, but I think, I think 440C is, is the stainless steel he uses. It's, it's essentially considered a budget stainless steel. Um, and I think that for a knife of that expense, you should at least use a quality steel. Uh, I know that would raise, raise the price a little bit, but they're already a four, 450, you know, knife. Like they, they, they need to have a better blade steel. I don't, I don't think there's a real reason not to have something at least a little better. Um, but that said, balance wise, feel, texture, design, tune, everything. It is fantastic. It's a great knife. It is, it is a really, I call it an inexpensive grail is, is the best way to describe it. I, Apart from the blade steel, which not everyone cares about, I get it. Um, I'd say it is it's an inexpensive grail. It's almost a must-have. I I will probably try to pick another one up at some point. I miss having one. Uh, I regret selling it because the I mean I I, just, I wanted to try more knives, and so I I traded it with cash. So I I traded it to someone who gave me their knife plus cash, and it was uh it was fine. I regret the trade because the Sentinel is fantastic. Um, next up, this is one of my top three. We have the Squid Industries Tsunami. Uh, mine is obviously the full dress Tsunami. And I've got one weight pin per handle. Um, and I know that the newer edition of the Tsunami just came out that has the jeweled interior and the improved sound and the hardware is the same for, for the top and bottom pivots. Uh, which I think is, uh, I don't understand why that wasn't a thing beforehand. That's okay, because this knife is easily one of my favorites. Um, I've got my review on it from a few months ago, and uh, my opinion has actually gotten better. Uh, this is not really freshly oiled, so the sound is not even as good as it could be, but um, the sound I think is better than I initially thought, although maybe that's that's because it's got a weight pin on each side, changing it a little bit. Uh, so I really like the sound. Um, I really like the look. Even on the non-dressed up versions, standard titanium steel, I think it's it's got a good look, it's got a good sound, it's got a good feel, the, the machining is nice. I Again, the review that I, I have for it, I think I've said enough good things about it. Um, I really have nothing bad to say. Uh, it is a fantastic knife, and I think at, at, uh, for standard models at their typical MSRP, I think the price is fair uh, because they are they are really great. Um, which brings me to my final knife on this list. Yes, final knife on this list. Um, with a review coming eventually for it, hopefully, uh, we have the... Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Labworks Design PDN, the Puddin, made by Turbo Jackalope on Instagram or Casey or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the PDN, mine is rounded. I paid a little extra for that, and uh, I think rounded is the way to go in terms of feel. Uh, but I will cover that more in my review. Uh, the PDN is, is S tier, and I, I've had mine only for a little bit of time. And as I'm thinking about it, it might, yeah, flipping wise, I might prefer it over my Tsunami. And I might even say that this is the like S plus tier. This is the only like, this is my favorite knife right now, I think. Um, at least in terms of flipping, 
it is it is light at I think 4.2 ounces. Um, it is sharp. It is a collaboration with JK uh, Design, uh, who I believe did the blade work, at least the sharpening and all the computer CNC stuff. Um, I don't know entirely the full story, but I believe that's that's the case, and uh, that it was case that had the uh, the original design for it. Uh, and he's the one that does the finishing touches and tune and everything. And it is, it has the best tune of any battle song I've received ever. Um, it has, I just, I love this, this whole pattern. I love the texture, the satiny finish. Uh, the sound is nice with this kind of, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's got a nice sound. Um, I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about it. Casey's a great dude, super friendly as well. Uh, genuinely a pleasure to work with and uh, if you can get your hands on one of these they go for a lot more on the secondhand market than they than they do initially uh, which I think is, is fair they are they are solid they've got a good weight they've got a good sound they've got a good blade good grip I there's I have nothing bad to say about it it is it is an s plus tier knife I absolutely love my PDN and uh, it is one of the few knives along with maybe the tsunami and definitely the high wall that I will not ever be parting with. It is absolutely fantastic. JK and Casey just knocked it out of the, out of the park on this one. I, I really love it. It is my S plus tier knife. It is it is my current favorite knife. Um, so that that is the end of this tier list. Um, in the future, regarding any reviews, I will be assigning them into this tier list. Um, Rather than giving a number score, rather than giving it a, you know, A plus, A minus, it'll just, it'll go on the tier list. Uh, so there could be more S tier knives, there could be more S plus knives, who knows. But tier list, all future knife reviews. So we got that out of the way. That is everything. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Uh, for future videos, uh, I'm open to suggestions. I'm thinking other than the PDN review, I could do a Q&A or I could just respond to general comments uh, in a video form and frame it like a Q&A. Because uh, I've received some comments and heard some things that kind of made me go, oh, I, need, I need to answer that. Um, although I typically try to respond to things in, in the comments. But I can do a Q&A video if people are interested in that. Uh, I can do a Rightworks rant. I could also branch off from Balasong related content if people want to see uh, Warhammer 40,000, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, anxiety related comment retiring at 27 comment con content uh just literally anything uh throw ideas out there i'm, I'm not too picky on on what i'm gonna make uh videos about although i can definitely stick to balance song videos if if that's what all 200 of you want uh i think that that really brings to the end i guess like and subscribe if you really feel like it i don't i don't know i'm, I'm not really great at this whole youtube thing as seen by the lack of editing and the fact that this is a nearly 35 minute long video where I talk about knives despite being a mediocre flipper. And uh, it's just my opinion. So thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate everyone that stuck it through all the way. And uh, that is, that's it, that's it for the day. Thank you.